Princess, Princess bathing. bathing. Yeah. I'll have ten of those then. <laughs> Five of those. Ten, ten. Ten, ten of ten. those. Oh. I'm the Queen Princess. <laughs> Oh okay, gosh, we're gonna eat all of this. I'm on. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. Uh -huh. I got a bit greedy. Okay. But hey, you only Someone live like once. Okay. Barely recovering from my gastronomical adventure, I head to Pura Tanjung Saptu, an estate belonging to another member of Trungano's nobility. An accomplished designer to the royal court, Tunku Ismail is also a conservator of historic timber palaces where he creates sanctuaries for traditional artifacts and memorabilia. I love this boudoir of <laughs> This is a little memorial painting of His Majesty, the presence from Swagun. So and how are you related? Uh, we are second cousins. Your Royal Highness? <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> this is the um, photograph taken the day of the actual coronation. I so I created the Hong Kong crown. So that's the crown? There's a, it's a white going diamond. Beautiful. It's very beautiful. Okay. It's all panel on both sides. What do we have here? Uh, this is a piece of song cat. Um, oh. This is used for the, the Mayon's uh, dance drama. A similar pieces worn by His Royal Highness during his coronation for the bathing ceremony. What is this pattern? Because it just goes on this, this and is, on. This is Bunga Pano. Pattern. It just the, looks so simple on the front, and then you flip it around, you go, oh, that's a lot of work there. A lot of work there. <laughs> Does yellow suit me? Oh, beautiful, gorgeous. Culture and traditions are intricately woven into the lives of Trungano's royal family. The fabric that enveloped his childhood set Tunku Ismail on a path to revive the art of making fine songket. This is a uh, knee lens trousers for ceremony for the Prince of the Royal House. It's so intricate. This is, a, I think this is about 150 years old. Wow. It's a family heirloom. I was curious why nobody we find Songke anymore. So I started going around the villages to learn how they do it. That's quite curious. I say, give me much pleasure. Right. Of doing fine things, the beauty of it. No? During my childhood, mm -hmm. I go into the, the circumcision ceremony. Right. You start early morning, you have a dress up, wrap up in songket, mm -hmm. you have a cold bath to yeah, immobile yeah, yeah. or <laughs> the string or whatever you call it. Ouch. <laughs> At least you do it in style. Yeah, in style. That's why in style, in full ceremony. In songket, gold threads are woven between lines of silk with colours symbolising social structures. This is um, the Malay Loon. Very uh, simple but producing very fine songket. This is where all the magic happens. Yes, the magic of the finger. For right. example, if you would have a this sort of pattern, which I did for His Majesty the King. Uh, they must have very good eyes. Oh yeah, they do. <laughs> First we do the um, basic loom. So the, what they do is the pattern is counted. Let's right. say 10 minus 2. Dig up four. That is what we call songket. Songket is to dig the form. So there are principally three parts to this. She's got legwork going on there. Yeah. She's got a needle through the fine thread, and then Doing she's the, got to weave this yes, backwards and that's forward. That's right. You much interested in weavings? Yeah, I Would am. Would you like to try? Um, okay, I want to try. Okay, please. Bling and me. It's like a little harp here. Okay, so where do I start? Huh? Ooh, hello. <laughs> yes. mm. What's the brand name? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. I lost this tree. Here? Oh, you're so clumsy, my dear. I am trying here. I feel like I'm doing a trapeze act. Yes, I made it one through. <laughs> All right, okay, now, now what? Faster, harder, uh, more. Uh. <laughs> Anger management. Okay, what's next? Everyone's <laughs> left. <laughs> I don't want to work with her. Fire her now. For the final leg of my journey, I get initiated into the world of an ancient Malay performing <gasps> art. Oh. How do I look? <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. I'm your heavenly angel. <laughs> she's like, no, she's not heavenly at all. <laughs> Yeah. 
Before my East Coast odyssey ends, I catch up with Ed and Koo again in a kampong near the state border of Kelantan and Trungganu to be introduced to a traditional dance troupe. Almost the entire kampong plays a part in performing the ancient Malay dance drama called Mat Yong. The lead role is played by 64-year-old local prima donna, Mek Ja, who comes from a long line of Mat Yong dancers. <laughs> she says, you know, there, are, there could be people who are better than her. Tapi kalau naik ke air, orang lain tak boleh. Tak boleh pakai orang lain. Kalau pergi 10 malam, aku nak kena naik je lah. Yeah. But she says, if you need a real good performance in Kuala Lumpur or anywhere else, like Paris, mm. Paris uh, then there's nobody else but her. What does it take to be an amazing Mat Yong dancer like her? Nak jadi Hana ni dia kalau tak ada apa ni tak ada keturunan dia payah sikit. Kalau tu ada keturunan sikit-sikit kita buat banyak dia jadi. Banyak dia boleh. Yeah, because you have the wind hanging flowing in you right. from your ancestry. Right. So it's a lot more easier for you. Kalau tak ada angin kita nak gerak jari seputung tak boleh. Dan dia awak tak ada angin ke? Ha. Yeah. <laughs> she said everybody has their own individual uh, wind, right. which can be translated as personality or character. There are many, many kinds of winds, as there are many, many kinds of people. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, separate desires, we have different wants, we have different talents. Mm -hmm. All of this thing is an expression of our, our, our wind. Sure. Basically, Angin is your intimate personality. How old is her mother? Flatinella. 116. 116. She's got such a strong spirit about her. Semangat mek ni, kuat ni. Laki-laki. Okay. So these are the outfits required in Mat Yong? Yeah. Yeah. This goes on your chest. Mek Ja has very kindly given me a small part to play in tonight's performance. As part of every initiation, the first thing she needs to do is to test my wind. Whatever happened to the wind? I think they took the wind out of me. We're sucking it. I can't breathe anymore. You're kind of good. Like a bird. I like the wind. Oh, oh, oh okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this way. Oh, 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 gosh. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's become apparent early on that I might not be cut out for a lead role, but I still get a part in the supporting cast. As with any theater production, backstage becomes a busy hive of costumes and a whole lot of makeup. We're transforming into characters right now, right? Yeah. I'm going for the female role. Yes. But, of course, she's got to be the yeah. king. Yeah. These are going to be the uh, accompanists. They're like uh, heavenly angels. So I'm playing one of the heavenly You're angels? One of those, yeah. Can you ask them what else I need to do to transform to be a heavenly oh. angel? Wow, <laughs> it's very bright. <laughs> How do I look? You look amazing. Thank you. Mat Yong has been hailed by UNESCO as a masterpiece of the oral and intangible heritage of humanity. Deep in the villages of Kelantan, it still retains some semblance of its animist roots. With the main Mat Yong dancer, there will be a kind of invocation just before she takes the stage. Is it different every time? No, it's something that is particular to oh, her. It's personal. Yes, it's personal. I'm your heavenly angel. <laughs> She's like, no. She's not heavenly at all. <laughs> in Mat Yong, stories are presented in a series of three-hour performances that can sometimes span several nights. The repertoire consists of dancing, acting and improvised dialogues. But every performance begins by paying homage to the main instrument, the rubber. Yong is basically the tradition that is most authentic to this region. It is believed that this uh, um, tradition of Ma Yong swells from the earth of Kelantan. Uh, and what do you find? You find all the prominent aspects of Kelantanese society, the uh, femininity, uh, the 
the mythology of Kelantan is all rooted in women, for example. Uh, and most importantly, it encapsulates the sensibility. If you listen to the language, language is very suggestive, it's very elusive, very romantic. For lots of people who aren't initiated, it's slow. Sure. The rhythm doesn't change very much, but uh, it's all a matter of command and control. So again, I terribly failed at um, another special dance. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on here. Well, uh, the king is left on his own to wonder. Right. And as he wonders, he basically meets the two comics right. who in the Mark Young play the role of uh, something akin to Shakespearean fools. But they also possess a lot of wisdom. Yeah, I noticed so. there's some comedy going on there. And there's a lot of whacking, and she loves whacking. That's all part of the uh, release of the angin, release of your wind. I mean, but the most important thing here is this is all an expression of individuality, of character, of mood, of temperament, uh, and really a belief that all of this brings uh, healing uh, to the individual and by extension to the community. My journey up the east coast of Malaysia through Trungano and Kelantan has been the most amazing experience. There's something alluring about this place, a gentle grace that pervades everything. It's in the subtleties, behind the shadows, between the lines, and what all the amazing people that I've met along the way have shown me that this beauty comes out in the arts. Maybe it's in the wind. Angin. Lumbu, lumbu. Softly, softly. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. No idea how I drive this thing. So does this thing come with an instruction manual? No? Not really? What does this do? Oh! Oh! Hello! Hello, Dama! Hey! Hello! Woo! Just working my thighs there! Ah! Oh. 